Hello, hello. How is everybody tonight? Hello. Wow, these seven already. Holy cow. Christian, hello. Jason, hello. Jacqueline, hello. Nathan, hello. Mayor Tom, welcome to the stream. How is everybody tonight? Let's see there, Mr. Wilson. Oh, hi, Olivia. I see you. <laughs> Cossie, Sam's already fed up. Let me see what Olivia said. I did see that she already did a super chat. One second. Uh, $10 from Olivia. Thank you so much. Or Boating McBoatface. Okay. Let's see. Anyone mad that Sam isn't doing fridge reviews? Like, I was waiting for Sam to say something like, the Titanic's fridge broke when it was submerged underwater, but the new outdoor fridge <laughs> All right, so that's what you meant in my Discord when you said that you were waiting for uh, to mess with me, huh? I am ready for you, Olivia. I am ready for your jokes. Bring it on. I'm just glad you're back in the stream. Olivia, I hope you're doing well. How is everybody tonight? Let's see. Uh, Emily, this is not Sam. This is Mass. Okay. <laughs> Glamorous Titanic. Hello, Jander. Hello. Maritime Pussy. Olivia changed her name and nobody noticed. I've seen her with that name in my Discord, so I mean, I just, I just noticed. Let's see here. Oh, another super chat. 10. Thank you so much from Toma. Okay. Let's see. The open gangway door supposedly forgotten. Wait, hang on. So Toma says the open gangway door. All right. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, oh, okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have to turn on. Uh, I have got to turn on slow mode. Hang on a second. All right. 30 seconds. There we go. Let's see here. Uh, Charles Yalkin, uh, glasses. Nice. Yep. Today's been one of those days where it's just like, I tried to put in my contacts and then my eyes were bothering me. So it's just like my eyes just were not happy with contacts today. So I'm like, okay, give my eyes a break. Let me see here. Tomas says, 10, thank you so much. The open gangway door, okay, supposedly forgotten, but it was a heavy wide door hanging an angle towards the bow. Wouldn't it have been far too heavy to pull shut anyway? Um, so wait, I'm, I'm confused about what you're asking here. It was a heavy wide door hanging at an angle towards the bow. Wouldn't it have been far... I don't think so. I mean, sure, those doors were very heavy, but I don't, if you could open and close them when the ship was not sinking, you know what I mean? Like, because they had to open and close those doors, you know, when the ship was docked and everything. So they wouldn't be too heavy for that. I'm a little confused about your question there, but I'm assuming you're referring to the D-deck gangway door, but no, it wouldn't have been too heavy for them to operate. Thank you for the 10, Toma. Let's see, Moose, 10, thank you so much. Um, it'll be a sad day if Bodie McBoface ever sinks or gets scrapped. Is that thing still around? So when did that whole Bodie McBoat face thing actually become a thing and everything? Thank you for the 10, Mooch. Well, yeah, when was that? Was, I get it. It came as like an internet joke. But when did that thing show up? Let's see here. We got that. I got that one. Okay, we got another five from Taylor. Thank you so much. Which would you rather cross the Atlantic on? The Lusitania, but you stay where the vibrations are the worst, or go on the Mayflower, but you can go anywhere. Okay, the Mayflower would be really cool to see, but... From what I know about sailing on ships during that time period, it definitely wasn't the ple a pleasant place to be. So if I had to pick, I would say the Lusitania, because sailing on those ships, like, while it would be really cool to see an old clipper ship sailing and experience that and everything, ships during that time period, uh, not exactly a pleasant ride. So I would go with the Lusitania and just deal with the uh, vibrations. I would just do that. Thank you for the five, Taylor. Good question, by the way. James, keep up the good work, Sam. Love your channel. Watching. From Shenzhen, China. Oh, that's so cool. I visited, um, uh, hang on a second. Let me see if I can remember here. Uh, what was your name? I lost your name. Uh, let's see. Oh, I lost you. But anyway, um, but yeah. Uh, Ni Hao. Ni Hao Ma. Uh, that's, um, uh, I remember a few things. Uh, isn't Do Sha Qian? That's how much something is. There were a few things in from China when I, I still remember when I visited. But yeah, I visited China a few years ago. And I know a little bit of Mandarin. Just a little, little, little bit. But yeah, very cool, man. I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad you enjoy my content. Hope you all are staying safe over there. Let's see. Here we got that one. We got that one. Uh, Black November. Welcome to the stream. Lusitania's captain, William Turner, survived a second torpedo attack on the Carpathia's half-sister, the SS I Iverna. Uh, Ivernia, Iver, Ivernia, S of Ivernia. I did not know that. That's really cool. So, did he take command of that ship after the whole incident with the Lusitania? Is that when he jumped over there? I'm not familiar with Captain Turner's career after the whole Lusitania thing, but I know that he jumped back and forth. Armenia, Armenia. I think I'm saying that right. But I know that he jumped back and forth, like during the Lusitania's career. There was a time period where he was captain of the Lusitania, and then while the Lusitania was still at sea, he was transferred over to the Mauritania, and he kind of jumped back and forth between the two ships during the ship's career, and he was obviously on board the Lusitania when it sank. But that's really cool. I didn't know about that. That's crazy. Did that ship survive? I don't know anything about that vessel. 
Let's see here. Thank you for the eight, Black November. Kyle, five. Thank you so much. Sam, let's not forget blenders. I don't know why you haven't done a video on blenders. Titania could have had electric blenders. We need blenders. <laughs> okay. Uh, for some reason, when you said blenders, I was thinking of a character from a cartoon. But okay. Kyle, thank you for the five. Uh-oh. Uh here comes, uh, here's Olivia again. All right. Five. All right. Want to play a game? Let's play Troll or No Troll. The fax machine is older than the Titanic, Britannic, and Olympic. I doubt that. <laughs> it, I, I doubt that. Hang on a second. Let me see here. Uh, just out of curiosity, when was the fax machine invented? The fax machine actually was invented. Oh, wow. 18, how, was it, how was the fax machine invented in 1843? When was the fax machine invented? The first recognizable version of what we consider a telephone fax was in, was okay. So the first that we consider a telephone fax was invented in 1964. Okay, so that I'm like, there's no way. Like telephone technology was in its infancy at the time of Titanic, but the technology that led to that advance was created much earlier. In fact, it was Alexander Bain in 1843 who invented the first electric printing telegraph. Very cool. Very interesting. Thanks, Olivia. So it's kind of a trick question. Seth, 14. Thank you so much. Sam, can you do a video on the Mauritania, such as you did with the Lusitania? Maybe. I don't think I'm going to do a complete timeline for Mauritania, but I am going to do a dedicated video because when researching the Lusitania, it's impossible to not like learn more about the Mauritania. So I've definitely been getting more and more interested with these old canard girls lately. And I mean, it's just both of these ships have such a fascinating... Before I started working on this timeline series, the only thing I really knew about the Lusitania was the story of her sinking. I never knew about the design, her career, everything they went through to build her. I mean, honestly, the Lusitania is one of the most fascinating ships. I mean, absolutely fascinating. But yeah, Seth, I am going to do a video about it at some point. Thank you for the 14. Captain 10, thank you so much. Hi, Sam. Love all your videos. I just went to the Titanic Museum in Tennessee earlier this week for my favorite YouTube channel. Uh... Captain uh, Mickey, you should check it out. I'm at 415 subs. Wait, wait I just went to dinner for my this week for my you oh for my YouTube channel. I see, I see. Uh, Captain Mickey uh, or Mikey, you should Mickey, uh, you should check it out. I'm at 415 subs. Today's my birthday. That's awesome, Captain. And uh, just uh, do me a favor. The best way to get me to check out a YouTube channel or whatever is post a link to it in the comment section for this video after the stream gets archived. And yeah, I'll check it out. And happy birthday, happy birthday, my man. Congrats with the YouTube channel. That's a good milestone. Love Monkey, 10. Thank you so much. Sam, have you seen the YouTube video from uh, historically where pics of the actual people are in? Wait, from the YouTube. Uh, have you seen the YouTube video from historically where pics of the actual people are animated next to the actors from the movie? It's very morbid in my opinion. I actually have no idea what you're talking about, Love Monkey, and uh, it sounds kind of creepy. But no, I haven't seen that. But thank you for the 10. Whoa, Moosh. <laughs> Moosh, 50. Wow. Thanks so much, man. Hey, Sam. Possible video idea on the RMS Nigeria. Did you know on October 27, 1937, she had over 300 cases of fireworks on board. One case exploded during five, injuring five dock workers and one died from his injuries. No, I did not know anything about that. The RMS Nigeria, huh? Okay. I will definitely add that to the list, Mooch. I got quite a few things I need to cover first but I will definitely get to that when I get a chance. Hang on, video ideas, boom, boom. Got that. All right, I definitely added that to the list. Like I've never heard of that, but okay. Listen, those fireworks, they're extremely dangerous. But hey, Mooch, thank you so much for the 50, my man. And no, I never heard of that. 1937, huh? All right, I'll check it out. Thank you so much, Mooch. And thank you again for the lamp, by the way. I still have to research that. Let's see here. Uh, Jacqueline, Maritime History. What is your channel name? Maritime History. Sabrina, hey, how are you? I see you. I didn't forget it was Sunday. Phew. <laughs> Sabrina, I hope you're doing well. I hope your family's doing well. Say hi to your boys for me. I hope they're all doing great. I hope you and your family are doing great. Black November, eight again. Thank you so much. Yes, after Lusitania. Third Doctor Who actor, John Pertwee, uh, worked on the HMS Hood in World War II, but was transferred shortly before the hood was sunk by the Bismarck. Wow, I had no idea. Now, I have not seen the original Doctor Who. So, like, before the remake and everything, like the old ones, I have not seen any of those. But I do need to go and watch them at some point. Um, shoot, when was it? Uh, whose anniversary was it? Was, uh, was Matt Smith still the Doctor when they did that big... Um, Doctor Who anniversary thing, like where he saved um, 
Oh shoot, what's the planet? Gallifrey? Gallifrey, I think. It's been so long since I watched Doctor Who. But yeah, like it had all the original doctors and all that. They're like, I really appreciate that. I need to go and watch that. But that's crazy. So the third Doctor Who actor worked on the HMS Hood in World War II, but was transferred shortly before the Hood was destroyed by the Bismarck. That's absolutely insane, Black November. I had no idea. Thank you for the eight. That's just like learning about the actor that played uh, John Jacob Astor in the Titanic film. That's just like learning about him and how he served on Titanic. Or how he, how he was a passenger on the uh, Wilhelm Gustloff. Mako, too. Thanks so much. You look like a math teacher. Thank you, but math is my worst subject. <laughs> thanks for the two. Kasi10, thank you. Sam, those glasses show that your vision is getting bad. I don't think we can let you control the helm of our vessels anymore, XD. Anyway, actual question. Would you rather own an ocean liner or a cruise ship? Ocean liner, definitely. And okay, Kasi. So if, for those of you who don't know, he's referring to Sea of Thieves, okay? Uh, we play Sea of Thieves every night. And Kasi, I think my driving is a lot better than yours, Mr. Crash into an island or cause our ship to explode for no random reason. <laughs> Explosive barrels. I'm just saying, just saying, Kasi. Thank you for the 10, man. Buddy, my boat blaze five. Thanks so much. Play again. Escalators are older than the Titanic. Troll or no troll? Uh, probably no troll escalators. Um, I'm imagining there was something there, but I'll have to look into that. Uh, Olivia, thank you for the five. Let's see. Charles 20. Thanks so much. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where'd it go? Uh, Charles 20. Wow. Thanks, Charles. Hi, Sam. Here's a super chat. Finally, I was wondering, when will you do a video on the RM8? Oh, gosh. Isn't that that? That's that bright side thing, isn't it? The RMAA Alimic or whatever. Isn't that that bright side? Hang on. Let me... Let me Google this real quick. Uh, I saw some I saw some pictures of that in the Discord earlier. I think I know what you're talking about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see if this pulls anything up. Whoa, what the heck just happened? Uh, hang on. RMAA Olympic. Copy and paste. Let's see here. Let's see if this pulls up the image that you're talking about because I'm 99.999% certain I know what you're talking about. And no, that didn't pull up anything. I'm assuming that you're talking about that really weird image from what I believe is a bright side video. So if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what you're talking about. But if it's that, then never. <laughs> Charles, thank you for the 20. April 5th. Thank you so much. Let's see here. What do you think would happen if uh, Idiot Scatino was captain of the Titanic? Um, if Idiot Scatino was captain of the Titanic, I think you mean Coward Scatino. Uh, ship hits the iceberg. Uh, no, we're not sinking. Captain, are we sinking? No, we're not sinking. Captain, we should evacuate people. Uh, okay, just... Uh, let me go change, and I'm going to trip and fall into a lifeboat. I think that something like that. <laughs> I think something like that, April. Thank you for the five. David, 20, thank you so much. Glad to be here. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Olivia. Does that lamp work that Mooch sent you? Haha. <laughs> I haven't hooked it up yet, but Mooch said that uh, it does work, so I am definitely going to try it. What I need to do is I need to get like a, like a top part of the lamp for it, like a lamp cover. I need to get that for it, and then I'm going to light it up, and I'll have it as a background piece. That lamp is still absolutely hilarious. That reminds me. I need to go and check my P.O. box. I haven't checked it this week. Thank you so much, David. Thank you for the 20. Chase, too. Thank you so much. Sam, what maritime artifacts would you like to own? Oh, that is a tough question. What maritime artifacts would I like to own? Um, I really don't know. Um, I'd still like to get something. I'd like to have like a small fragment of the Britannic, like maybe some Britannic coal or something like that. I think that'd be cool to have. Um, I've got some stuff. I've got that deck chair from the Queen Mary, which is another one of my favorite vessels. I'm happy to have that. You know, I'm really not sure. I'd have to give that some thought. I really would. But I'm very happy with the stuff I do have so far. And, you know, it's just all the history. I think it's so interesting. Chase, thank you for the two. Whoa, Moose 50 again. Holy cow, man. Moose, thanks so much. Holy cow. You're welcome. Also, just to, just to also throw this out there, she was launched in 1912 and sunk in 1940. She was also the first oil-burning steamship certified by the Board of Trade to carry passengers. That's crazy. All right, I'm definitely going to look more into that ship, and maybe we'll get a video about it. But hey, Moosh, look, thank you so much for the 50 man, or thank you for the 100 now. But hey, Moosh, thank you so much. You're awesome, and thanks again for the lamp. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Okay, we got that one. We got that one. Okay, Tomat 10 again. Thank you so much. Can you do a video on the 
Ludington Car Ferry, the SS Badger. Uh, this is the last coal fire passenger steamship in operation in the United States. The Ludington Car Ferry. I feel like I heard about that. Isn't that up in the Great Lakes? I feel like it is. But yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe I'll get to that at some point. I just have so much. Hang on. I'm going to Google this real quick. The Ludington Car Ferry. Hang on a second. And guys, please remind me to install some streaming software on this computer. That way I can show you guys what I'm looking at. That way, like, because I think that would add a whole other layer to the live stream. I just keep forgetting to do it. But like when somebody asks me to look something up, I'd like to be able to hit a button and then flip the screen so you all can see what I'm looking at. I think that would add a whole other layer. Uh, the SS Badger is a passenger and vehicle ferry in the United States. That served, yeah, Lake Michigan. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, people have mentioned this to me before. Hey, Toma, it's on the list. I'll definitely get to that at some point. But hey, thank you so much for the 10, my friend. Uh, Emily, uh, but he, but he says, no troll, no troll, no troll. Okay, cool, cool. The first escalator was in 1859. Awesome. Olivia, I hope you're doing well. Uh, Taylor, five. Thank you. Can you all hear that? Can you all hear that? <laughs> Can you all hear that? <laughs> <laughs> no, Google. <laughs> um, I didn't even say the Google word. How did that happen? <laughs> that was my uh, that was my Google speaker. Okay, Google. Who invented the light bulb? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that was crazy. I don't know how that happened, but all right. That's just like when somebody says like Alexa or something on those TV shows and everything goes nuts. All right, let's back up here for a second. <laughs> I lost the super chats with all the with all the Google chaos. <laughs> that was absolutely hilarious. Oh gosh, Sam has lost it. <laughs> all right, hang on. Let me scroll back a bit. I'm so behind on these super chats now. Uh, okay, we got that one. We got that one. There's Toma before the Google thing went crazy. Uh, let's see. Taylor, five again. Thank you so much. Have you watched the Dogfights episode hunt for the Bismarck? The part with the uh, survivor Ted Briggs is very interesting. I have not. Is that where they were? Um, they were the Dogfights episode hunt for the Bismarck. So is that a video talking about like the combat and everything that they did to try to hunt down the Bismarck during the ship's final voyage and like the fighting and all that that ensued? Is that what that's about? Taylor, thank you for the five. I have not seen that. Let's see here. Taylor, two again. There we go. Sorry, I meant to mention Ted Briggs was on the hood. Okay, cool. Nope, I'm not familiar with that, but I will definitely check that out, Taylor. Let's see. Chesta, 50 in okay. I think that's five. Thank you so much. If Scatina was captain of the Titanic, he wouldn't have even uh, he wouldn't even get to Southampton. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. I don't think Scatina could navigate without modern technology. Mako, two. Thank you so much. Is Titanic based on a hotel? Uh, no. So a lot of the interior stuff with the Titanic, I believe they had the Palace of Versailles in mind. I believe that was the whole big thing with that, was the Palace of Versailles and all that kind of stuff. But no, it wasn't based on a hotel as far as I know. I know they did like the, they they wanted they wanted to feel like a hotel and resort, but they had Palace of Versailles theme. I believe that's what, I, I think that's right. Anyway, thank you so much, Mako. Mooch50, thanks so much, my friend. Yes, Sam, reconfirming that the lamp does work, or at least it did when I tested it before I shipped it. All right, Mooch. You know what I'm going to do for, you know what I'm going to do? Remind me before the live stream is over, and I'll go and get a light bulb, and I will test that lamp before the stream's over. I'll do that. I will do that, Mooch. Thank you so much for another 50, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Black November 8, thanks so much. In 1961, U.S. astronaut Gus Grissom escaped his sinking space capsule called Liberty Bell 7 when the hatch unexpectedly blew. It was recovered in 1990. Yes, yes, I know about that. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but didn't his suit start to flood as well? So like when he jumped out of the pod and was in the water waiting to be picked up, uh, his suit started taking on water and it was like trying to drag him down. And then the helicopter that was trying to save his pod was fighting with the pod and trying to pull it up. And they didn't notice that like Gus was like drowning. You know, he's sitting there like waving for help and he was still wearing that heavy space suit and water was getting in. And I'm like, yeah, I know all about that. That's absolutely crazy. Um, it was recovered 1999. Okay, how deep was it? I believe it was several miles down, wasn't it? That's absolutely crazy, Black November. Let's see, uh, Michael, 20. Thank you so much, my friend. Hi, if the bird tore holes in all the Titanic's compartments, she loses power and capsizes in minutes with no survivors. <clears throat> Ooh, hang on. Okay. 
Hi. If the bird tore holes in all the Titanic's compartments, she loses power and capsizes immense with no survivors. What do you think this would do to the wreck and the fame of the ship and its discovery? You know something? I don't if so. Here's the big thing about the Titanic, okay? It it would be famous, you know, the biggest ship in the world on its maiden voyage. But if that happened, basically the story would be the Titanic disappears, you know, or she's lost. Like, so the hand. Uh, she just kind of missed no survivors. Yeah. So if she had no survivors and stuff, then it would just be the Titanic went missing with all hands, you know? And while the story of the Titanic would be interesting and fascinating, she'd be up there in the category with other shipwrecks where we don't know what happened to her. And a big part of the Titanic story is not only that she was the biggest, the most luxurious ship in the world, but it was also the fact that how the ship went down. Because, I mean, as she was sinking, you know, she sank so slowly that there was time for all of this stuff to happen. And, you know, and like the story of the Titanic, I mean, it's almost it's crazy to believe it happened because, you know, you've got your heroes, you've got your villains, you've got this water that's coming up so slowly and it's also like the most scrutinized two hours and 40 minutes in history, you know, because people want to know what this person did, what this person did. How did this happen? How did this happen? And because there's so much information on it, so much interest on it, we are able to piece together the events of what happened to this ship, you know, and study it and learn about it. And I don't think the Titanic would be anywhere near as famous if it just disappeared. I think a big reason it's so famous is because of how everything played out. You know, because there was time for us to study it and get, learn about it, be fascinated by it. You know, I think the story plays a huge role in it. Does that make sense? Great question, by the way. Holy cow, Ryan. 300. Holy cow, man. Oh, my. Ryan, just thanks, man. Like, holy cow, Ryan. Just thank you. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Holy cow. All right. <laughs> what do you have to say? We, the Scatino Brightside TW Tupperware Company, give Sam this lovely donation for the most false and clickbait video. <laughs> why didn't I expect that? Like, why? Why did, I need to come to expect these things. You do these huge super chats and get me all emotional, and then <laughs> you troll me. Okay, so here we go. I have to suffer. I have to suffer through this. All right. We, the Scatino Brightside Tupperware Company, give Sam this lovely donation for the most false and clickbait videos on the Titanic that our research team has ever seen. The most grave and frankly appalling injustice to you. P.S. You gave our legal team up. Okay, the Scatino Brightside. Okay, you know what? I don't even know how to respond to that. Let's see. So, Scatino Brightside Tupperware. Um... Okay, so with the exception of Tupperware, because Tupperware is a good product, uh, the Scatino Brightside, um, I think you might need to try to find a change of employment because uh, Scatino and Brightside, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 Scatino's a bad captain. He's not a captain. He's, a, he's, he's not a captain in my book. And Brightside's clickbaity false videos on Titanic. <laughs> uh, all right, Ryan. Thank you so much for the 300. I really appreciate you, man. But if you really do work for the Scatino Brightside uh, company, uh, I suggest finding a new employer, my man. But Tupperware is a good product. So if you work for Tupperware, stay with them. <laughs> Ryan, thank you for the 300, man. I just <laughs> thank you. Uh, IMVU, bro. Imagine if Brightside met you. Uh, I would love to talk to Brightside and like have like a debate with them. I think that would be absolutely hilarious. <laughs> that would be so funny. Brightside is one of those channels that lives on clickbait. You know, they they see the name Titanic. They don't care how they have to butcher the story as long as it gets views and. Yeah, so I've tried to watch Bright Side videos before, and uh, there was smoke coming out of my ears from how much anger I have. So, <laughs> thank, thank, thanks so much, Ryan. Super appreciate you, man. Terry Five, thanks so much. How much would I have to pay for you to do a timeline on the the Docos? The Docos? I have no clue what that is. All right, hang on a second. Uh, well, you wouldn't have to pay me anything. Just recommend it, and I'll get to it when I can. But let me see. What is this? The Doko, Doko Shipwreck. The Doko Ship was the oldest underwater shipwreck discovery known to archaeologists. The wreck has been dated to the proto helidic period, uh, 2700 to 2200 BC. Wow, really? The remains of the shipwreck are located 15, 30 meters underwater off the southern coast of Greece near the island of Dokos. There's no pictures, though. Okay, this is interesting. This is crazy interesting. All right, I'm putting this on the list. Hang on. Let's see. The Doko. The Doko, oldest shipwreck 
ever discovered, ever discovered. Right, I'm definitely going to research this, Terry. Hey, Terry, thank you so much for the five. I can't believe I've never heard of this, but I have it. But hey, thanks so much. I will definitely research this when I can. All right, now I'm at the part where everybody's laughing about the Google. That just shows how far behind I am in the chat. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Bodie McGoface, or otherwise known as Olivia. Olivia. Let's see. Five. Thanks so much. To my fans, I won't be here next week. Going to see the Titanic in Branson, Missouri. Uh, then going to the Aaron 1912's Titanic Tother speech <laughs> afterwards of Eve. Um, Olivia, I uh, would not recommend that. I definitely would not recommend that, Olivia. Um, I'm afraid you'll get converted to the dark side. <laughs> Olivia, thanks for the five. Zelda, five. Thanks so much. Reminds me of when a friend saying potatoes somehow triggered my not saying that. Also meant to ask this last week, but is there a link to the Discord anywhere? Um, I usually have to renew it every week. I just reset it every week. So again, remind me, and I will post a link to it in my community page, or yeah, I'll put it in the community page after this uh, Discord ends, or after this after this Discord after the stream ends. Let's see your moot ten. Thank you so much. Will do. Awesome moot. Let's see. Ha ha. I envy you. You got glasses. Yeah, I usually wear contacts. I envy you, but uh, my eyes are bothering me today, so I just get my glasses on. That's it. Let's see. Uh, Vincent, historic travel. Sam, can you do a video series on the RMS Queen Elizabeth like you did with Queen Mary? Well, I haven't done a Queen Mary series yet. It's just in the planning books. But maybe. We'll see what I'm doing. I still have Lusitania to finish, and then I'll get to Queen Mary after that. So we'll see. Let's see. Sabrina, five. Thanks so much. When we saw the Titanic exhibit in Vegas, we saw the big piece up close. Super emotional moment. Could you do a video on how they recovered? That is definitely on the list already. And I do need to do that. That needs to be a soon video. Like, um... Honestly, that could be my next Titanic video. Now, I'm currently planning to do a video on Jack Phillips and Harold Brad, the wireless guys, if you're not familiar with them. And that's something that I've been working on, and I've been kind of putting it off, and then I'm going to work on it again. But the next video I'm going to do is the Endurance. So I'm going to do a video about the Endurance and the Shackleton Expedition. But maybe. That, that would be a, That's an interesting topic. I need to research it myself, but... Very interesting topic, Sabrina. Hey, thank you for the five. I'm going to put that on the list. Hang on. Let's see here. Titanic... Titanic, big piece. It's got it. Got it, got it. Cool. Sabrina, thank you for the five. Super appreciate you. Hey, would you guys ever like me to share my list? <laughs> would you guys ever like me to uh, to share my list so you all can see how many uh, video ideas that I have out there? Like, would you guys like me to show you guys exactly how many? Uh, <laughs> see the list. Yes, please. Yes, yes. <laughs> It's just a notepad document, so it's not exactly organized. Like, well, it's or it's it's numbered, but yeah, it's crazy. Hang on a second. Create a poll. Uh, should I share the list? <laughs> yes or no? Ask your community. Should I share the list? All right, I just posted that. Let's see what the voting says. Let's see here. Let's see what the voting says. All right, I gotta go. I gotta now. I gotta go back and find out where I left off on the super chats. Uh, da -da -da -da. where was I? I am so far back. 100% yeah. Whoa. Whoa. 100% no. Y'all don't want me to share the list? Okay. I mean, I'm surprised. I'm very surprised. I thought y'all would want me to share the list, but 100% no. I mean, okay. Okay. 100% 100 no. I got it. I got it. 100% no. I understand. <laughs> Taylor, are you blind? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get my jokes in, guys. I have to get I, <laughs> I have to get my jokes in. I have to get my jokes in. All right. Back to the super chats. Back to the super chats. So all right, joking aside. Let's see here. We got that. Uh, but yeah, awesome, Sabrina. I will definitely get to that when I can. Ship historian, welcome. Ten. Thank you so much. What would you do if this whale was real? This is a fictional whale. It is a mile long, not including its tail, and it's able to swallow ships whole. I was able to smash giant vessels with its tail. I feel like you're referencing Moby Dick here, but I'm, you're probably not. I don't. I just. I don't know anything about Moby Dick. I just know about the whale and all that stuff. But if it was a mile long whale and it was smashing ships, I imagine people would go after it. But good grief, that'd be a huge animal. How big was Megalodon? How big was Megalodon? I can't remember how big that shark was. Like, what's the what's the estimates? Ship historian, thank you for the tenth. Mako, too. Thanks so much. You should do the Apollo One disaster. Oh, that would be interesting. To do a video about the Apollo 1 disaster. That, that, that's a very interesting idea. Uh, 60 feet, I believe. 50 to 60 feet. 60 feet, okay. I've seen videos of Megla or pictures of Megalodon's teeth, and holy cow. But yeah, do a video about the Apollo 1 disaster. I have been meaning to do a space video, but I think what I was going to do first is the Apollo 13 and everything that happened with that. Like Seriously, that's a miracle that those guys made it home. 
the story of Apollo 13 is definitely one of the most insane stories. But, it, you know, even though it was a disaster at the same time, it ended on a good note due to the incredible efforts of the team at NASA and the courage of the astronauts. I mean, so many people came together to bring those guys home. And I mean, it's it's unbelievable that they made it. It's unbelievable that they made it. I'll say Bodhi Mibopface 5. Here we go again. Troll or no troll? Got it. Titanic had electric bass that could cure someone of being a witch. Titanic had two on board next to the pool and Turkish bath. Let's see. So Titanic, well, the, the, they, the Titanic did have those electric bass and the Turkish bath. But now exactly what they did and everything, I'm not exactly sure. Like, I know I've looked it up. I just can't remember. Like, I don't know much about the Turkish bath system. But wasn't it kind of like a, wasn't it like a massage place? Like, like a massage parlor? And like, they had the swimming pool. And I know the electric or the, the the Turkish bath, the electric bath, like they ran electricity through it. Was it like a steam bath or something? I I just I don't know. I just I don't know. I haven't looked into it enough to say for certain. But was it like what exactly did the electric bath do? What did the electric? I know the witch thing's a troll. I'm 100 percent that's a troll. But like, what did the Turkish bath actually do? Like, did it run electricity through it? And like, did it make steam or? Was it was a therapy thing? Like, what exactly was it? You see, th th I'm asking you guys because I'm not 100 percent certain. I need to research that. But the way I've heard it described, it was like it was like a spa kind of thing. Uh, I'm watching the live chat, but no one's answered yet. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to it. Uh, let's see here. Really good question. All the um, let's see. No, no one's answered. Okay, I'll have to research that and come back to it. Uh, let's scroll back. Scroll back. Uh, yes, share the list. Share the list. Uh, hang on, I'm still behind on the super chats. Oh, uh, wait, 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 I completely lost it. Troll, no troll. Okay, there we go. Gaming with Emerald 5, thank you so much. Hello, Sam. I'm joining practically last minute. Well, at least I'm here. Gaming with Emerald, I'm glad you're here. And what? We're at the 30-minute mark. It's not the last minute. We're at the halfway point. Emerald, glad you're here. Taylor 5, thanks so much. I know we, it will be forever, but I look forward to when you do a video. Wait. I know it will be forever, but I look forward to when you do a quick video on Glacier Girl. Glacier Girl. Uh, Glacier Girl. Hang on. Let me see here. Glacier Girl. Is it an airplane? Glacier Girl airplane. Glacier Girl is a Lockhead uh, World War II fighter plane that was restored to flying condition after being buried beneath the green. Oh, I've heard about this. Yeah, it was an airplane that was uh, buried in the ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard about this. Yeah, I'll see if I can get to that eventually, Taylor. Thank you so much for the five. That actually reminds me of um, Captain America a little bit. That's really cool. Let's see here. That's a really cool. I completely heard. Wasn't the plane in like really good condition? I feel like it was. Ugh, excuse me. <clears throat> JG35, thanks so much. Hi, Sam. I'm curious to know what happened to Ismay after the sinking of the Titanic. Very bad. <laughs> so um, Ismay was basically made out to be like the villain. I don't think he suffered any. I just I don't remember. I haven't looked into it for so long. But I don't think they charged him with anything. I know they entered. I know he tried to slip back to England after the. Um, so basically, the Titanic sank. Carpathia was steaming to New York, and he sent those secret telegrams to try to get another ship ready for him to get him out of uh, New York as quickly as possible. And then the U.S. police had to catch him. They intercepted him before he got away. And I don't think he was tried with anything, though. I don't think they they made him any like a war criminal or not a war criminal, but I don't think they actually tried him for or anything. But I do know that he was vilified from the disaster. You know, like the media, he was like the escape goat kind of thing. And he didn't deserve that. He did not deserve that. But at the same time, he definitely didn't make himself look good. You know, he definitely didn't make himself look good. The press back then was looking for their heroes and their villains. and. Ismay basically set himself up. You know, that's honestly, that's what happened. You know, by sending that secret telegram and signing his name backwards and all that other stuff, he made him, he made himself out. He became the perfect escape game. Let's put it like that. Let's put it like that. JG3, thank you for the five. April 2, thanks so much. Can you do a video off of the USB Atlanta in Wildwood? The USB Atlanta. I'm not familiar with that, April, but I will definitely look into it when I can. USB Atlanta. I would Google it right now, but I've really got to get caught up on these super chats. But thank you for the two, April. Black November 8, thanks so much. Uh, the space capsule sank three miles down, so it was deeper than Titanic. Have you seen the movies Britannic and Waterworld? I have not. I have not seen Britannic, and I have not seen... I've seen clips of the Britannic movie, but no, I haven't. But three miles down, that's crazy. I've seen pictures of it from underwater, but I, I haven't seen any of that stuff. That's crazy. We got that one. We got that one. Scrolling down. Jason 5, thanks so much. Let's all take a moment to remember all the ships that didn't sink. Lol. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Ships. 
Like the Queen Mary, like the Queen Mary, Queen Mary didn't sing. SS United States didn't sing. Uh, I don't think any of the big four sunk. Did any of the big four sink? I don't think they did. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think any of the big four sunk. Um, all the Oceanic class, with the exception of the Atlantic, I don't think any of them sank. A lot of ships. A lot of ships didn't sink, but ships did sink back then. Mauritania. What about Mauritania? What about the RMS Mauritania? Well, let's see here. We got that one. Uh, just uh, in OK 50, so that's five. Thank you. Recently went to Chopagan, DK. By recently, I mean February, from Oslo, um, Oslo, on board a ship called MS Crown Seaways. I took the driverless metro there, too. That's awesome. I have no clue where any of those places are, but hey, thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks so much, Chista. Ship historian, 10, thank you so much. No, the whale is called Monstro. That's Portuguese, uh, Portuguese for a monster. It appeared in Pinocchio. Oh, Pinocchio. So the only thing I know about Pinocchio is from the, uh, the Disney cartoon. I haven't read the book or anything. And I haven't seen that since I was a kid. So I had no way to remember that. But ship historian, thank you for the 10. I do know yeah, a whale ate them, right? They're, like a whale did eat Pinocchio in the movie, right? I feel like I remember that. But yeah, thanks so much, Ship Historian. Thank you for the 10. Sabrina, five, thank you. I sent a flash drive with photos from the exhibit a while back. If it was lost, I can send them again. Big piece pics were included. Yes, yeah, Sabrina, Um, I never got that. So I never got your flash drive. And I looked for it. You know, I went up there quite a bit to the post office trying to find it. But yeah, I never found it, Sabrina. I'm sorry to say that. But yeah, so um, if you do want to resend that, I would appreciate it. And I would love to see those pictures. Sabrina, thank you. Paul Watts, 18. Thank you so much. Super appreciate you, my man. She got ice warnings. We are stopped. So why did Captain... Wait. Uh, she got ice warnings. We are stopped. So why did Captain Smith plow on? Uh, we got ice warnings. We are stopped. So why did Captain Smith... Um, are you referring to the Californian? Or what ship are you referring to? Because now, because what a lot of people don't know about the Titanic is as the Titanic was sailing on and it got ice warnings, what Captain Smith did was he actually had the Titanic divert further south. And because he did that, he thought he was well below where the icebergs would be. So that's why he had the Titanic carrying on at full speed or near full speed. Boiler Room 1 wasn't lit. But yeah, so that's why he did that. You know, he wasn't being completely negligent. You know, he just thought that, yeah, we're safe. And then you also have to remember that on the night that the Titanic hit the Berg, Paul, it looked like a clear night. You know, it's just there was the mirage effect going on, but because there was no moon, it was hard to spot that. So from the officers on the bridge and up in the crow's nest perspective, it looked like they could see for miles around the Titanic. I mean, it looked like they had the best night, perfect visibility, all that stuff. But they just didn't know about the mirage. So... And then because Jack Phillips and Harold Bride were busy with the radio and Jack Phillips had been up for, what, over 24 hours by the time of the Titanic impact because they were up all the previous night fixing the radio. You know, the, the Californian message never got delivered to the bridge because he got irritated. So, Paul, let me ask you this. How would you feel if you'd been up 30 hours, okay? You've got your radio turned up and you're listening to a place that's very far away and you're listening for the faint dots and dashes of Morse code. And then another ship that's ten miles away sends a radio message to the uh, sends a radio message to the Titanic, and it's so loud that you rip the headset out of your ear. You're tired, you're annoyed, and you just got a loud ring in your ear. And then Jack Phillips sent that message: "Keep out, shut up, I'm busy." So I mean, that's what happened, and like I'm not excusing it. You know, I'm not excusing that Jack Phillips did. That was definitely a mistake. But the only thing I'm saying is that's why it happened. Jack Phillips was so tired. He was trying to hear Cape Race and it just, it aggravated him. You know, I think his reaction, while it wasn't the correct reaction, it is an understandable reaction. Does that make sense? And that's why that message never made it to the bridge. But yeah, so that's, that's what's going on there. You know, it was just, it was just a completely freak thing. If that's the message you're referring to, but yeah, he was just exhausted with everything he had to do. And I mean, honestly, I can see just about everybody reacting like that in that situation. Let's see here. We got that one. We got that one. Paul, thank you for that. Bodie McBoface, a.k.a. Olivia. Um, it was like a tanning bed. It was thought to cure someone of being with Dar spirits, according to doctors and priests. Okay. <laughs> okay, Olivia. Let's see here. Ship historian, 20. Thank you so much. Question, and probably a lot of people don't need to answer this, and probably a lot of people don't think of this, but what happened to the Mayflower? Huh. I actually don't know that. Hang on. Hang on a second. I don't know that. Uh, let's see. Mayflower. Wikipedia. 
Wikipedia is like one of the greatest things ever, I have to say. Let's see here. Uh, fate, most likely taken apart by, um, I cannot pronounce that, Rotter Hitty, uh, Shipbreaker in 1624. Most likely taken apart. Oh, okay, so out of service somewhere between 1622 and 16. So she was broken up, basically. Okay, interesting. I never even thought about that. What happened to the Mayflower? She's broken up. That makes sense. Ship historian, thank you for the 20. Kyle, five, thanks so much. No, the Turkish bath was just a room full of gobbling turkeys. Why else would they call it Turkish bath? <laughs> Have you guys ever seen those videos of um, a guy who goes into like a like it's a, a turkey farm or whatever, and he goes in there and he goes, and then all the turkeys go nuts just like that. <laughs> uh, how's my how's my turkey sound? How's my turkey sound? How is that? I'm watching the chat. I'm watching the live chat. Is my turkey sound good? Uh, how is, how is my turkey voice? <laughs> Question mark. How is my turkey voice? Better than mine. <laughs> Sam, Wikipedia is the greatest triggers trigger. No. <laughs> Wikipedia is good, but it's not perfect. You know, make sure, make sure you do more research too. Uh, everybody told me at work that I have a pretty good, uh, we were all goofing off one day and they all told me I had a pretty good parrot voice. So <clears throat> hang on, I'm watching the live chat here. Tell me how my parrot voice is. Ray sale. Ray sale. How's that? How's my parrot voice? <laughs> Probably better than my turkey voice. Let's see here. Uh, rah, my bad and chip. <laughs> How is that? Let's see. Thanksgiving confirmed. Very nice. Good. Steve Rogers. Good. Charles. Yes. David. Good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know I'm a jokester. Better than the turkey. Fair enough. All right. Back to the Super Chats. Okay, we got that. We got that one. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Moose, 10 again. Thank you. Have you seen the Futurama episode that had Titanic? Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, long time ago, but yes, I've seen it. Uh, wasn't it a black hole? Wasn't it a black hole in Titanic? It's been it's been so long since I watched Futurama. Taylor, thank you for 10, Moose. Taylor, five, thanks so much. Which movie do you think got Ismay getting into life but more accurate? A Night to Remember or Titanic 1987? Uh, it's been a while since, um, I don't really remember the, the night to remember one. Wasn't it basically identical? I feel like it was identical. Uh, or was he, or I just, I don't remember the, the night to remember one. It's been so long. Um, I need to look that up, Taylor. I need to look that up. But, uh, what happened in the, in the night to remember one? Was he ordered in or did he hop in? Like, uh, like what happened in the James Cameron? I just, I don't remember. I don't remember. Taylor, thank you for the five. I'm not hundred percent certain. But if you want my opinion, I think Murdoch told him to get in. JG320. Wow. Thanks so much. Okay. Here we go. I've got a challenge for you. You got a challenge for me, huh? Well, bring it on. Wow. I can't. Wow. I can't see it all. Okay. I'm like super nearsighted. So without my glasses, even from like this distance, I can't read any of the words. <laughs> I'm super nearsighted. JJ, all right, I've got a challenge for you. On your next non-Olympic class video, I challenge you to not mention any of the Olympic class once. If you fail, you have to wear a lampshade on your head in a video following evil laughter. So you want me uh, on a non-Olympic class video, I challenge you not to mention the Olympic class. Well, JG3, the only problem with that is it depends on what I'm talking about. So like usually... Honestly, I don't think I've ever not mentioned the Olympic class when it wasn't needed. Because, like, the the story, even though we were doing the video about the Lusitania, you know, the Olympic class, that's part of the story, you know, because it was the Lusitania and Mauritania that were the big reason for the whole, uh, I'm trying to stop it. If, if it wasn't for the Lusitania and Mauritania, honestly, the Olympic class would have most likely never existed, at least not in the form that we got them. So, I mean... I mean, I don't feel like I mention them out of context. Every time I mention them, there's a reason to mention them. So I'm not really sure if I could do that. And if I'm doing a topic that isn't about the Olympic class, like the endurance, then I'm not going to mention them at all. So that challenge, I get it, but I'd have to skip over history. You know, if I mention them, there's a reason to mention them. That's what I'm saying, JG3. So thank you for the 20, but I'm not sure if that'll pan out. We got that. We got that. Gene, too. Thanks so much, but no question. But thanks, Gene. Uh, Ben's five. Thank you. You should put some great Lakers on the list. The Great Lakes have a ridiculous amount of wrecks. Edmund Fitzgerald started my interest in shipwrecks. That's awesome. Excuse me. And I do have a good number of uh, Great Lakes ships on my list. Like the Bradley is the one I can think of immediately. But I'm definitely going to cover it. I forget the name of the ship. But there was a Great Lakes ship, Benz, who um, what they did was they found it. And I think it sunk in the early 1900s. Hey, Bean, if you're here, I could use your assistance. Um, but... They found this ship, and it was at the bottom of the lake. I forget which lake, but it was in perfect condition. 
Like it was just like they couldn't find any holes in the hull. It was uh, there. The lifeboat for the ship was on the bottom beside it. I mean, it was like it was just in unbelievable condition. And it turns out when that ship sunk, there was a crazy ice storm, a blizzard or something. And so much what caused the ship to sink was so much ice built up on the ship's hull and decking and everything that it caused the ship to lose buoyancy. I mean, there was so much ice on board the vessel that they were sailing it on the Great Lakes and it literally just dropped. I mean, can you just like that just blew my mind. But that's what they think happened to it is a ship that disappeared. I just I can't remember. I can't remember when it was. Um, did any of you all know a uh, schooner that sank with the schooner that sank with heavy ice? Um, let's see. Uh, Joshua, if there are any parts of the limb, um, was it the bottom of Lake Ontario? I'm, I can't remember. I cannot remember. I just I remember I saw it. And no, it wasn't like the Endurance. The Endurance got crushed by the ice. This vessel, from what records they could find, they just said the ship was sailing on the lakes and it was covered in ice and the ship just dropped. It just dropped. So I just, I cannot remember what it was. It's bothering me now. But yeah, um, I'll have to figure that out. But yeah, that's, um, uh, let's see. Oh, now that you mentioned it, uh, the cow, oh, you're talking about Scotina. Okay. I'm pretty sure some of the wood from the Olympics still, okay. You guys aren't even talking about that, but yeah. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll do some more great lake ships at some point. Let's see here. We got to get back. Uh, where on earth was I in the, where, where, where was I in the chats? I'm so far behind. Okay. Uh, ship historian five. Thanks so much. Did you know that Blackbeard covers his beard uh, any type of oil so that when he lit it on fire, smoke would appear to be coming out of his beard? Really? That was a thing? So he, he covered his beard with any type of oil so that when he lit it on – Blackbeard lit his beard on fire? And what kind of oil did he put on it? Like, I, I'm afraid, like, wouldn't he – if he put something flammable on it, wouldn't the beard go – uh, What did he – I have a lot of questions from that comment. Ship Historian, thank you for the vibe. I don't know anything about Blackbeard. Uh, Ship Historian, five again, thank you. Uh, it said most likely no one knows for sure what happened to the Mayflower. Gotcha, ship historian. Thank you. Lil, five, thank you. Hey, Sam, I was wondering if you could do a video on the SS America. It has a very interesting career. Unfortunately, it, it's lost to the sea. That was the sister ship to the United States, correct? Is that that's the one that they were towing and the line broke and then it half broke in half and the other half was still? No, it was beached and then the ship had the, the stern section broke away and collapsed and then the bow stayed around for a while. Am I thinking of the right ship? I'm pretty sure I am. But yeah, if that's the same ship, then I am planning to do that. I'm planning to do a video on that. Thanks, man. Moosh, five, thank you. It was a black hole. Okay, black hole. Let's see here. Uh, Bodie McBoface, a.k.a. Olivia. <laughs> I seen the truth. A movie revealed it to me that sharks damaged the Titanic and a giant L octopus held it together to New York. Everyone was saved. You know, for a minute there, I thought you were talking about that mouse movie. Because uh, doesn't an octopus show up and grab the Titanic? I feel like that happened. Anyway, Olivia, thank you for the five. Ship Historian 20, thank you so much. Mr. B asked you to watch the entire Brightside Titanic video for 100. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> so, big question, okay? So, uh, okay, so if, if I did that challenge, am I allowed to critique it? <laughs> am I allowed to rage? Am I allowed to talk about how much of a piece of bull crap it is? Like, uh, listen, you guys. So the first time I became aware of that documentary that talked about a coal fire sinking the Titanic, um, I went to my parents' house because they had Rosie. And I was picking up Rosie because they watch her when I went go to work and everything. And my mother was upstairs in her bedroom. And I just, I walked in and said, hey, Ma, what's going on? And then she looks at me and goes, Sam, have you seen this thing about a coal fire sinking the Titanic? And my mom is like, my mom likes Titanic, but she isn't as into it as I am. And I'm like, what? And then I turn and I look at that documentary. And when I saw that picture of those black marks, like right under here, like around the forward well deck and like, look, these black marks are proof that a fire damaged the hall. I'm like, that's not even like, do you not like, <laughs> like I raged like right there on the spot and like, like, okay, can we, can we please not, can we please not make me rage tonight, please? Like, it was just like, it, and the way they talk about it, like they talk about like this is like, like it's fact or whatever. I mean, ugh. anyway. Okay, Sam. Oh, and then apparently that documentary, uh, 
Exactly, maritime history. Those marks aren't even where the exactly. They weren't even where the boilers were. That was the cargo area. I mean, it's just <laughs> David, calm thought, calm thought. Huh? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and that those are the type of things that really annoy me more than anything else is when these documentaries or whatever come out. And to somebody who knows Titanic or knows history, like all the ship historians and whatever, we wouldn't think twice about that. But the way they word those documentaries is how do you, I've said this a thousand times, but how do you sell a good lie? You mix in elements of truth. And this guy was trying to get his 15 minutes of fame by coal fire. Coal fire, change history. I think the doc is on Paramount. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just like all these people are trying to, instead of becoming good Titanic historians, they're trying to make their mark by changing history. And I think that's terrible. Okay, okay. Calm down, Sam. Calm down. You've raged enough. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so ship historian, thank you for the 20. Let's see, Taylor 5, thank you. Not to remember depicts them telling everyone around the boat that there was no more room, while the 1997 depicts that nobody else was near. Oh, okay. Not to remember depicts everyone around the boat. Uh, everyone around the boat, there was no more room. And then what? In a night to remember, Ismay just jumps in. So basically, and y'all are probably going to be stunned when I say this, I've never watched a night to remember from start to finish. I've seen most of the film throughout time, but mostly in dips and drabs. Like I've seen clips here, I've seen clips here, but I've never sat down and watched the whole movie, which is something I need to do. And I cannot believe I haven't done it, but I haven't. But yeah, okay, so that's it. Night Primer depicts them telling everyone around the but there was no more room. And then what? Ismay just jumped in, like he ignored the order and just jumped in. I don't think that happened. There is um, there is some testimony there or claims where people said that there was a rush to the boat and that Ismay jumped in. But the way I understand it, it's more likely there was no one around that boat. And Murdoch told everybody who, if there's any anybody else, if anybody else wants to get in this boat, they can. That's how I believe it happened. If I'm wrong about that, uh, I need to do some more research. But I think Murdoch ordered his man in. That's what I think happened. That is absolutely what I think happened. Uh, what? All these reactions. <laughs> I've never seen that. Trailer. It's really good. Yeah, I definitely need to watch it. I, as I said, I've seen most of it. I've watched a good chunk of the sinking bits. And I feel like I have seen the movie. Like I know about the Carpathia and all that. I just, I have probably seen 70% of A Night to Remember. I just have not sat down and watched it from start to finish. That's, that's it. That's what's happened to me. That is, that, that is my story with A Night to Remember. Let's see here. Backtracking here. I got that one. Taylor Five. Thank you. We got that one. Okay. Uh, cringe G2. Thank you. I sent a lamp to your P.O. box. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Did you send me a lamp, Cringy? Did you really do that? Are you trolling me? Did you really send me a lamp, Cringy? <laughs> so if people start mailing me lamps, then I think I'm going to have to make that part of my background set. <laughs> you know what I was expecting, guys? And please don't take this as an invitation to do this. Uh, but I know I know you guys, you probably will. I honestly thought that the first lamp that I was going to get in my P.O. box was going to be a replica of the leg lamp from Christmas Story. <laughs> and if one of you actually sends me that, I'm going to die laughing. So that, that's not an invitation. Don't do it. But I'm sure one of you is going to do it now. But honestly, that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought I was going to get a, uh, I thought I was going to get the leg lamp from Christmas Story, which is one of my favorite movies, by the way. Christmas Story is hilarious. I can't put my arms down. I love that movie. I absolutely love that movie. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Mm. All right. So, ladies, someone do it. <laughs> Here we go. Somebody do it. Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's see here. Uh, all right. Terry five again. Thank you. You would, uh, you would think that with all today's technology, they would figure out how to melt ice as it forms on ships. With all today's technology, figure out how to melt ice as it forms on ships. Um, don't they have some ways to do that now? Like, don't they hit it with like, um, I mean, I'm sure they can't do it with every bit of the hull, but don't they have ways to deal with ice now to a certain extent? I, I don't know how they do it, but like icebreakers and stuff like that. Like, don't they have ways to do it? I really don't know. I don't know enough about, I don't know anything about uh, ice removal on ships. Does anybody else know, Terry? I'm, I'm actually curious about that. I'm sure that ice is a problem, but I feel like it wouldn't be as big of a problem as it was 100 years ago. Anyway, let me know about that in the chat. I really have no idea about that. Wolfman10, thank you so much. It was tan infusions that Blackbeard tied to his beard, then lit on fire, giving the appearance that his beard was on fire. I've been reading Honesty of Glass, and it's a really good read. That's awesome, Wolfman. I did not know about, about Blackbeard. 
I definitely need to research Blackbeard. I need to read on him. What year was he active or what years was he active? Was he like um, 16, 1700s or like what was his what was his time frame? Let's see here. That we got that one. Bodine McBoatface, aka Olivia. <laughs> uh, you are one of the best. Uh, uh, WR1, you are one of the best. Your videos are very informative. Uh, when you put a new video out, I click on it because I get to learn. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> well, you know what? Rachel's not here, Olivia, but I'm glad you like her content. Rachel does make really good videos, by the way. Hey, Olivia, did you see her video where she built a Titanic uh, costume for Halloween? That was a good one. Ryan 10, thank you so much. I've seen the truth regarding Titanic. Is May, with all the universe truce, cause the Kraken to V break the Titanic? Uh, no, not true. <laughs> Ryan, thank you for the 10, by the way. Let's see. Oh, look at this. Benjamin, my birthday was on the 23rd. Benjamin, happy late birthday. Everybody in the chat, wish Benjamin a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Benjamin. Hang on, I'm putting it in the chat. Everybody, wish Benjamin a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Benjamin. Happy, happy, happy birthday, Benjamin. Everybody wish him a happy birthday. Say happy birthday to Benjamin, or happy late birthday. Happy, happy birthday from all of us to you. We wish you happy birthday. Does anybody know what movie that's from? <laughs> happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Let's see here. Uh, backtracking again. We got that. We got that one. I'm sorry, guys. I always have, whenever I go down to the uh, bottom of the chat to see what the live chat's doing, I have to backtrack. Ship historian fifty. Wow. Thanks so much, my man. Holy cow. Thanks. Thank you so much, ship historian. Do you know the Flying Dutchman is based off a real ship? The ship was that say the wait wait. wait. <clears throat> okay. Do you know the Flying Dutchman? It was based off of a real ship. The ship. Was that said, add the entire crew got a major sickness. No port allowed them to go in. The last sighting of the ship was that she was in a great storm going into the fog. Huh. So I always thought that the Flying Dutchman was based on the Mary Celeste story. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, what was, I've never read this. So what was the, hang on. Uh, what is the origin of the Flying Dutchman story? I don't think it was SpongeBob. <laughs> Listen, the Flying Dutchman is a legendary ghost ship which is said to never be able to make port, doomed to sail the oceans forever. The myth is likely to have originated in the 17th century golden age of the Dutch East India Company. Uh, the Dutch Maritime Power. Flying Dutchman, Wikipedia, of course. As a legendary ghost ship, <laughs> Flying Dutchman was said to try to send messages to land or to people long dead. According to the legend, if uh, hailed by another ship, the crew of the Flying Dutchman was said to try to send messages to land or to people long dead. Reported sightings in the 19th and 20th centuries claimed the ship glowed with a ghostly light in ocean lore. The sight of this phantom ship is a uh, por uh, potent of doom. Portent of doom. Uh, the first print references of the ship appear in travels in various parts of Europe, Asia, and Africa in the 1790s, so way before the uh, Mary Celeste. Okay. The weather was so stormy, they said the Flying Dutchman. Uh-huh. Very interesting. That would be a good dedicated video. The origins of the Flying Dutchman. That is – what do you all think of that? Would that be a good topic? The origin of the Flying Dutchman. I mean, we're kind of going into urban legend here, but – would you all like a uh, Would you all like a video about that? Dutchman, there we go. Would you all like a video about all that? Like talk about the origins of the Flying Dutchman and what what do you, what do you all think of that? The origin of the Flying Dutchman. Would you guys like that to be a uh, a video topic that we cover on this channel? Because honestly, I really I didn't know it was that old. You know, I didn't know it was. I I always thought it was a story that originated from the Mary Celeste. I had no idea it was that much of an urban tale. But that's crazy. Let's see. Yes, 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 yes. 94% yes. All right, cool. All right. Well, I'll definitely get to that. That's something that's interesting to me. You know, I never really thought about it. Let's see here. All right. Let's scroll back to the super chats now. And we're getting close. Okay. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. The line that to me is a real short one. Chip historian. Thank you for the 50. That's crazy, man. Thank you for that. Larry, 10, thank you so much. Hey, Sam, finally made it to the live stream. Welcome, Larry. <laughs> I saw a documentary where they said our favorite baker, Charles and staff, filled their lifeboats with bread before they were launched. Do you know if this is true or not? I do know that Charles Yalkin, yeah, if, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've looked at it, but I do believe he did pick up some food and provisions for the lifeboats. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but didn't he stock some of the lifeboats? Hold on a second. Uh, Charles Jalkin 
It's been a long time since I looked at his story, but I feel like he did. Like he was stalking some lifeboats on Titanic. He was part of the, on the ship of the iceberg. He was off duty and in his bunk. According to testimony, he felt the shock of the collision and got up immediately. War was passed down from the upper decks that they were getting the lifeboats ready. And Jalkin sent his 13 men up to the boat deck with provisions. Okay, I thought so. With provisions to the lifeboats. Four loaves of bread apiece, about 40 pounds of bread each. Jalkin stayed behind for a time, then followed them up, reaching the boat deck around 1230. He joined Chief Officer uh, Henry Wilde by lifeboat 10. Jalkin helped him with the stewards and seamen. Ladies and children, um, Jalkin's help with the stewards and the other seamen, the ladies and children uh, through the boat. After a while, all the women on deck ran away from the boat saying they were safer on Titanic. The chief baker went down to a deck and forcibly brought up the women and children, throwing them into a lifeboat. So he was really, he was really persistent about getting them. Although he was assigned as captain of lifeboat 10, he did not board as it was already being fully crewed by two sailors and a steward. He went below after life attendant had gone and had some liquor. <laughs> there we go. Had some liquor. But so, yes, uh, him and his team did help stock the lifeboats. That's what I thought happened. That's what I thought happened. He went down to his room for some liquor. So he did his duty, made sure the people he was in charge of were safe. He's like, okay, my job's done. Where's my liquor? <laughs> Charles Yalkins. His story is... Uh, after he saved the women and children he was responsible for, he had a new mission. Make sure the Titanic went down with as little alcohol as possible. Charles Jalkin's story is just fun. It's fun to talk about. Uh, it's not fun at the time, but you get what I'm saying. It was fun to write. It's fun to laugh about it now. Let's see. Cold five. Thank you. I'm going to mail you some Tupperware lids. That's what I'm going to send you. Oh, gosh. Hi, cat. Hope you're doing well. <laughs> Taylor, too. Thank you. A full night to remember is on YouTube for free. I know that, Taylor, and I definitely need to do that. I'm going to watch it. Cringy, three. I 100% sent you a lamp. Cringy, please autograph it. <laughs> please autograph that for me. Wolfman, 10. Thank you. I think I may host a watch party on Amazon and make you all watch my Titanic movies. Titanic 1953. Honestly, that one's not bad. I've seen it. A Night to Remember 1958, as well as the 2012 miniseries. I'll have to purchase the 1997 film as well. That'd be, honestly, a Titanic movie marathon for the Titanic anniversary. Like, well, not, we wouldn't do all that on the anniversary night, but, huh, that might be a fun thing to do for uh, April on my Discord. Like, have, like, a Titanic marathon. Like, maybe... Maybe one night every few days or something like that. We'd have like a Titanic film or something. That'd be a lot of fun. Xbox, LG Productions. Awesome. Hey, thanks for the 20, my friend. Hey, Sam, my family and my family are waiting for the next episode of Lusitania. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Xbox, LG Productions. Excuse me. Why am I burping so much tonight? But thank you so much, Xbox, LG Productions. I'm glad you're enjoying the Lusitania series. It's a lot of work. Let's see. Um, Mishael, one. Thank you so much. No question, though. And are we all? Boating mid both face two. Thanks so much. See you in two weeks, Sammy McSam. See you in two weeks, Olivia. Stay safe out there. And I think we are... Oh, no. Here, here, a couple more. We're almost all caught up. Joshua, two. Thank you so much. King George V saw the Flying Dutchman. Not King. Seriously. I had no idea. Joshua, that's crazy. Thank you. Didn't Philip see it, too? I think he did. Mooch 10, thank you. I know what your ship could, uh, name could be, uh, the SS Aaron 1912, for being an inspiration. Oh, gosh, the name of my own ship. No, thank you. I'm not going to name my ship Aaron 1912. No, we are not. <laughs> all right, everybody. So we are all caught up here. Uh, wait, Titanic Tinker, can't blame him for the liquor. <laughs> that, I mean, just Charles just didn't care, you know? He just, he just didn't care. He didn't care. Uh, he just, you know, he's like, okay, I done my duty. Uh, he is pretty funny in a night to remember because you see him kind of <laughs> like like that and everything, and then you also see him um, when those uh, third class passengers run into him and they ask Charles Yalkin, which way to the boat deck or which way to the lifeboats, and he goes, anywhere you want, man. All roads lead to Rome. I mean, honestly. They did an incredible job with telling the story of Titanic in a night to remember. I mean, honestly, they did they did a great job. They did an absolutely great job. Jason Five, thank you so much. There is a rumor in my family that an ancestor of mine helped Charles Yalkin the night of the sinking. Really, Jason? Seriously? Um, please join my Discord. I'd like to learn more about that, man. I really, really would. All right, everybody. We are at the one hour mark. We are all caught up. Hang on. Charm, just watch the scene in a night to remember, and you're right. Ismay is standing there. Someone, someone, someone says, no more room in this boat, and Ismay just steps in. Okay, okay. So that's what happened. All right, everybody. It is now time 
to close out the live stream. I know you guys don't want any more Q&As or whatever. Y'all don't want to see Rosie. So and I'm just going to go ahead and close out the live stream for tonight. All right. So, hey, everybody. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This was an incredible live stream. Thank you all so much for being here. <laughs> <laughs> Q&A, Q&A, <laughs> you joking little. <laughs> uh, no, I'm calling my lawyer. It's not April 1st yet. <laughs> the lamp. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, so you know what? Let's do that first. Let's do that first. Let's do, Um, I've got the Q&A list right here. Let me go grab the lamp real quick. Let's see if that works. Be right back. Be right back. You are about to hear me going up the stairs. Could y'all hear me running up and down the stairs? <laughs> All right. We've got the lamp. We've got the lamp. All right. So let's see if this thing works. All right. Let's get this. Uh, let's see if this lamp absolutely works. The lamp, my beloved. So in case y'all don't know, uh, Mooch sent me this. Mooch sent me this lamp in my, in a, um, to my P.O. box. Let's see. Stomp, stomp, stomp. So do you guys think this lamp is going to work? Does this lamp work? Let's kill the lights or let's, 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 let's make this a big moment, okay? Let's, let's make this a big moment. I'm plugging the lamp in. Hey, it works. The lamp works. <laughs> uh, the lamp works. The lamp, the, the holy lamp will work for sure. Yes, yes, yes. The lamp works. Mooch, are you still here? Are you still here, Mooch? Are you still here? It lives. It lives. <laughs> this is absolutely hilarious. I love these live streams. I absolutely love doing these live streams. Mooch, are you still here? I don't see you, Mooch. My eyes. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Well, that is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Let's see. Yes, it will work. Of course it works. Merit it's alive. It's alive. Uh-oh, I can still... <gasps> Oh, Mooch, here he is, Chad. Thanks, Mooch. Oh, wow. Just as bright and shiny as I remember. Here's Mooch. So, everybody, this is Mooch. So, the guy who just did the $10 super chat, he's the one who sent me that lamp. That's Mooch. Everybody say hi to Mooch. Everybody thank him for sending me the lamp. Everybody say thanks to Mooch for sending me the lamp. Thanks, Mooch. <laughs> everybody thanks Mooch for sending the lamp. <laughs> All right, everybody. It is now time. For this week's Q&A, are you all ready? Do you all know the drill? Do not answer until you see the word go. Show up in the chat. I've got 10 questions tonight, and I think I've got some hard ones. So, all right. So, are you all ready? Are you all ready for tonight's Q&A? Murder my keyboard time. <laughs> you guys make me laugh so much. I, I love – seriously – I really love doing these live streams, guys. Like, this is so much fun. This is such a good way to do a Sunday night. All right, here we go. Very important timing here. All right, um, let's see. Hang on, I got to turn off slow mode. All right, slow mode is turning off. Uh, CJ, thanks, Sam. Have a good night. Bye, CJ. Thanks for tuning in. All right, everybody. Are you all ready? Uh, first question is going to be a tough one, all right? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. First question is a tough one, all right? All right, are you all ready? And remember... You do not, if you're new here, you'll see the word go show up in the chat. If you answer the question before go shows up, it does not count. So I'm going to say go and I'm going to ring the bell. You cannot answer the question until after you see go show up in the chat or I will not count it. All right, here we go. And you have to listen to this one. This question's kind of long. All right. <clears throat> On the wreck of the here, question one, Maritime, are you ready? Are you ready, Maritime? I'm, I'm watching you. Uh, let's see, Siphon, uh, all darn, I just got here and we're at the end. We're at the Q&A, Siphon, or Siphon, Siphon? Yeah, we're at the Q&A, so you're good, you're good. Maritime, are you ready? Yes, all right, here we go. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> on the wreck of the Titanic, there is one davit on the wreck that was cranked back into the position to prep a lifeboat for launch. However, before they could launch the boat from that davit, the Titanic sank out from under them. They had to cut the ropes from that davit to free this lifeboat tied to it. 
which lifeboat davit is this and which lifeboat was tied to it? Which lifeboat davit is this and which lifeboat was tied to it? Ready, set, go. Okay, not, uh, you do not, that does not count because you are spamming. Uh, you are spamming. Which lifeboat was it? Let's see here. We got that. Oh, whoa, whoa. Maritime history. Classical A and one. Good job. A and one. Good job, maritime history. Maritime history is in the first place. That first one I saw, you, you answered too early. So, and you were spamming, uh, whoever that was. Uh, there was somebody I had to, I had to mute. But yeah, no spamming, guys. No spamming. That's uh, in NP Psycho. That yeah, don't do that, man. Don't do that. But yes, uh, I got the first question. That good job, maritime history. Good job. So the answer was uh, lipo davit number one and collapsible A. They cranked that davit back into position during the final stages of the sinking, and then the Titanic dropped out from under them and all that. Great job. That's a tough one. All right, here comes another tough one. All right. So this is a Lusitania question. Are you all ready? Are you all ready? <clears throat> Here we go. The watertight bulkheads on Titanic uh, cut, uh, were... So the watertight bulkheads on Titanic, they cut through the ship's interior. So like as you looked along the Titanic's hull, the watertight bulkheads went through the midsections of the ship, you know, on the lower levels, of course. But now on the while the Lusitania also had this feature, she also had watertight bulkheads built along its hull which housed, which were part of the Lusitania's coal bunkers. What were these bulkheads called? Ready, set, go. What were these watertight bulkheads called that went along the Lusitania's hull and housed the coal bunkers? They didn't cut through. Longitudinal, Richard got it. Longitudinal bulkheads, that's exactly it. Yeah, longitudinal bulkheads, longitudinal, or longitudinal, longitude bulkheads, long, or longitudinal. Yeah, that's it. That's what I was looking for. Longitudinal bulkheads. Good job. That's a tough one. Uh, Richard got it. Richard got that one. Good job. Good job. That one didn't have anywhere near as much of an explosion in uh, comments as I expected. But yeah, that's a tough one. That's a good one. Very good job. <clears throat> All right. Besides boiler room number six, what was one of the first places on board the Titanic to start flooding that had personnel in it? That had personnel working in it. So not boiler room six. There was another compartment that had crew in it. That was one of the first crew spaces to start flooding besides boiler room six. What was this on Titanic? Go. What was this? Not boiler room five. Wasn't that. Wasn't that. Wasn't boiler room five. Jo yeah, they got it. Ismay got it. The mail room. That's what I was looking for. The mail room. The mail room was what I was looking for. The mail room. Boiler room five. Kind of. But yeah. But yeah, I mean, you could also say Boiler Room 5, but it was still mostly contained to the coal bunker. So, but yeah, the mail room is what I was looking for. Good job. Good job, Ismay. I just haven't seen you in a while. Good job. Good job. Good job. All right. This is another tough one. And you guys are going to need to kind of be familiar with your World War I history to get this one right. <clears throat> here we go. Congrats, Ismay. Uh, you would definitely know. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right. What was the top secret office that the British used to intercept and decipher German messages during the First World War? A hint, this office intercepted many communications from U-20. What was this office or room called? Ready, set, go. What was this room called where they intercepted and deciphered uh, communications? Code breakers. Nope, nope, I don't see it yet. Uh, this is a tough one. There he is, Translun. Uh, hang on, I got it. Transolunary, trans, trans, transolunary, transolunary, room 40, transolunary, room 40. That's exactly what I was looking for. Room 40, good job. That's a tough one. But yeah, room 40 is exactly what I was looking for. And I think he's the only one who got it. I'm impressed. Yeah, he is the only one who got it. Transolunary, room 40. Very, very good job. But yeah, room 40 was a top secret uh, office where they picked up and intercepted communications. And it was in that room where they were keeping track of room uh, of U-20. So every single time U-20 transmitted a message back to Germany, room 40 picked it up. And that's how come, like, that's, excuse me. And then they were, they were supposed to send those messages to Lusitania and all these other ships. Great job. Uh, what ship are you talking about? That was Lusitania. So room 40. That was Lusitania. All right, y'all, this is, this is an easy one. This is an easy one. All right, what are the bacteria called that are currently eating the wreck of the Titanic? Did not know that. That's awesome, Maritime History taught you something. That's awesome. But what are the bacteria called that are eating the Titanic? Ready, set, go. 
What are the bacteria called that are eating Titanic? Rusticles, maritime history. Bro, are you kidding me? <laughs> rusticles, rusticles. Thomas Andrews. <laughs> Thomas Andrews isn't eating his ship. But yeah, rusticles. You got it. You got it. Good job. Good job. Good job. Rusticles. All right, here we go. We're jumping back to Lusitania here. And you know what? This next question is going to be a little bit of a tell. Because if you watched my video, my last Lusitania video, you should get the answer to this question. All right? All right, here we go. All right, chat, settle down here. <clears throat> what was the festival called that the Lusitania participated in in New York City in October of 1909? What was that festival that the Lusitania uh, was involved in in October of 1909? Go. What was that festival called? What was that festival? It was not called the Ship Festival. It was not called the – nope. Um, Little Good Doctor is close, but not right. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Uh, it's a Hudson thing, but I don't see the name yet. I uh, don't see it. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, do World War II, do World Fair. Hudson Fulton. Joshua got it. The Hudson Fulton Festival. Good job. Hudson Fulton Festival. That is 100% right. See, I got some tough questions tonight. The Hudson Fulton Festival. Good job. Good job. Good job. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Here we go. Maritime history. 300th anniversary. Hudson Fulton. Yep. Good job, Maritime history. All right. So, what here? All right. Here's another question involving that festival. What brand new form of transportation was also on display with the Lusitania at the same festival? What brand new form of communication was on display with Lusitania at the same festival? Go. What brand new form of communication was on display with Lusitania during that same celebration or festival? Maritime planes, airplanes. All right. All right. Airplanes, airplanes, and airplanes, sir. Yes. Good job. Hang on a second. So uh, Maritime History said planes. And the exact same second, Benjamin said airplane. So you know what? I'm going to give this to Maritime History, and I'm going to give it to Benjamin. So good job, good job, good job. Uh, JG3 also got it within like a few seconds of that, or milliseconds of that. So right, but so JG3. That's a lot of ties. Jacqueline got it too. Master got it. A lot of people got that right there, right there. A lot of people did. A little good doctor, I got it. Cool. So everybody got that one. I've seen that actual plane in DC. Uh, Kale, what about me? Did you get it too? I go by the first ones on the list, man. Like I go through the first messages on the list to determine who gets it and everything like that. But good job. Good job. All right. Here's another good one for you. What ship was in constant competition with the Lusitania for the Blue Ribbon? What ship was in constant communication with the Lusitania for the Blue Ribbon? Go. Let's see here. What ship was in constant communication with Mauritania or Lusitania for the Blue Ribbon? Uh, Mauritania, Mauritania, <laughs> Mauritania. <laughs> Man, the chat just goes nuts. Like, I just, just see the chat go, whoosh, it's like a wave. So, who on earth got that right? Who? I didn't even see who got it. Uh, Maritime history, Mauritania and Mr. Lusitania. You guys got it at the exact same second. Siphon got it too, JG3. All of you guys got it right there within like 0.1 second of each other. Zelda got it. Richard got it. Translunar, it's Sister Mauritania. All of you guys got Oh, he paid pen prop. Got it too. Awesome. Ah, oh, man, you guys are too smart. You guys are too smart. FYI, uh, hang on. Uh, somebody just said I can't spell. As long as I can read it, I don't care. Let's see here. All right. Here's a tough one. Here is a tough one. And if you guys get this, I'm going to be very impressed. All right. Maritime history. Are you ready? Maritime. Are you ready? I, this is, this is going to be a very, very tough one. I had to look this up. I didn't, I didn't know this. I didn't maritime scared. <laughs> I didn't know this until I, until I was researching it. Okay. Here we go. All right. Wait, wait, wait. What ship held the blue ribbon before the Lusitania took it? What ship held the blue ribbon before the Lusitania took it? Ready, set, go. What ship held the blue ribbon before Lusitania took it? Nope, the, the Lusitania was built first. Lusitania was built first. Uh, Kaiser Wilhelm II, master got it, holy cow. Right, Kaiser Wilhelm II. It wasn't Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse, it was Kaiser Wilhelm II. Good job, a German liner. Very, very impressive. Who was that again? Who got that? Uh, let's see, Kaiser. I'm I'm stunned. Master Badger got it. Wow, that I can't believe it. I really thought I had you guys. I thought I thought I had you guys with that one. But yes, Kaiser Wilhelm number two. That was it. 
That was 100% it. That's very impressed, Badger. Very, very, very impressed. Good job, man. Good job. All right, last question of the night, and this is probably going to be an easy one compared to all the other questions that I've uh, I've had to do tonight. So last question of the evening. Are you all ready? Da -da 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 -da. All right. When the Titanic broke in half, how many pieces did she break into? Ready, set, go. When the Titanic broke in half, how many pieces did she break into? Let's see. How many pieces? Nope, nope, nope. Ah, <laughs> there goes the chat. Okay, okay, okay. I got to backtrack. I got to backtrack. Uh, Siphon 2 is made of 3. Nope, nope, nope. April, nope. It wasn't 2, 3. I'm looking for Mako 4. That's what I was looking for because you got two big pieces of tower section, the big pieces of superstructure. So four, because there's those two big sections. There's uh, tower one and tower two on the seafloor. So four. Four was the answer I was looking for. So four pieces. But yes, so the Titanic broke into four pieces of um, the bow, the stern, and those two big clumps of superstructure. So four. Good job. All right, everybody. So, uh, bro, you counted. <laughs> yeah, I said four. Didn't, um, I didn't see it. I thought it was, uh, thought I already got it. So wait, who was the first one to say four? Is me. Da -da -da -da. Um, no, wait, Angel. Angel got it. Angel four. Four is me. Yeah, Angel got it first. Angel was the first one to got it. Angel four. Yeah, Angel got it first. Angel was the one who got that one. Good job, Angel. I haven't seen you before. Dang, four pieces. Yep, it broke apart into four pieces mostly. <clears throat> well, let's see here. Oh, we got a five super chat from Joseph. Thank you. Uh, what would be your top places you would like to visit on the Titanic if you went back in time? Uh, Grand Staircase, first class dining room. I'd like to see the third class space where that big party was held. I'd like to see that. The Turkish bath, the Strauss cabin. I would love to see that. But yeah, a lot of places. The bridge too. That'd be cool. All right, everybody. So hey, that's it for the Q&A. Uh, would you guys like to see Rosie before I close out for the night? Would you guys like to see Rosie before um, the double hall broke off too? Yeah, that's true. The double hall did. But I wouldn't count that as a huge piece of the ship. You know, I wouldn't count that as a big fragment of the ship. I count that as kind of a piece, like a small little piece of, but not a huge, huge chunk. But yeah, the double hall did break off too. All right, let me check on Rosie. Give me just a second. Let me see what she's doing. <laughs> uh, once again. <laughs> All right. Uh, my dog, seriously, she is way too comfortable. Like she is way too comfortable in this house. That's that. Uh, gosh. Rosie, your fans want to see you. My dog is, without a doubt, way too comfortable. Uh, uh, there we go. <laughs> All sprawled out <laughs> on my couch in a dog lull. <laughs> oh, Rosie, she, like I told you guys, she is way 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 too comfortable like just just look at this this rosie you know you're internet famous right you know you're a you're a youtube star how does that make you feel <laughs> hang on i'm gonna grab some jerky can you all watch it for a second be right back that face when she hears me grab jerky, <laughs> when she hears me grab jerky, did you guys see that? Do you see how she just jumped up? Uh, oh, she knows what's coming. Oh, Rose, don't move. Rose, you like treats? <laughs> what breed is Rose? She's a golden retriever. She is a golden retriever. Look at her. All right. Oh, I'm running out of big pieces. All right, Rosie, are you ready? All right, ready? All right, so here we go. We're going to do that trick again. So I'm going to see how long it takes her. So, how can I do this? Uh, okay, we'll get it later. All right, ready, set. Here we go. Are you ready, Rosie? You ready? One, two. Oh, did you get it? Good job. Ready? <laughs> she is like a ninja. She is like a ninja. All right, here you go. I'll give you a little. All I have are small fragments, but here. There you go, Rosie. <laughs> there you go. She is 110% a baby. Mm. But that's Rosie. Now, that is my dog. Mm. That is Rosie and her beef jerky. All right, everybody. Well, hey, I think this is a good place to close out the last stream for tonight. So, hey, everybody. 
Thank you all so much for tuning in. This live stream was a ton of fun. Everybody did super chats. Thank you. Everybody that tuned in with the comments and regular chat. Thank you. And all the video ideas. I mean, seriously, guys, I couldn't do this without you. I absolutely could not do this without you. So guys, just thank you all so much for all the support. I will have my next episode of Historic Travels out to you as soon as I can. And next live stream, same time next week, everybody, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. All right, everybody. Well, hey, you all stay safe out there. You all have a good one. And thank you for making this an incredible live stream. You all are amazing. And I could not do this without you. Have a good night, everybody.